Hello everyone and welcome back to the Man channel. My name is Oliver and today I'm going to run you through how I changed the electric brakes on my 2000 US cargo uh, cargo trailer. For today's project we're going to be working on this 10,000 pound enclosed trailer and the last trip uh, black got all over the back wheel here so I'm thinking that uh, it probably blew off some grease and may have a bad bearing so we're going to go around and check all four before our next trip here and see what needs to be done. And I pulled the wheel off, pulled the grease cap off, and it looks like the grease in here is just liquefied. The wheel's still spinning smoothly, so I don't think the bearing's shot, but we're going to pull that off of there and repack the bearings real good and inspect them, and uh, hopefully just have to put them back together and re-grease it. After pulling the hub off, uh, it's just a castle nut that you take off, and then the whole hub slides off there. We found that uh, the axle looks like it's in good shape. The bearing actually doesn't look like it got burned up or anything, but look what I found laying in the bottom of the disc or in the bottom of the drum. The whole tensioner assembly came apart on it. And I think the easiest thing here, most practical thing here to do would be to uh, just replace the entire drum. So I called my local trailer shop and they said they have plenty of these things in stock, so I'm gonna pull this thing off and head over there first thing in the morning, pick up a set of four, minus we'll replace all four while I'm at it, so it's gonna be a 400 mile trip each way, so I just wanna make sure that I don't have any problems cheaper than uh, having it towed or try to find service for it on the road. I'll be back tomorrow once I get this apart and the new one's in, and we'll show you how they go back together. Morning, I'm here at R.A. Adams Enterprises. It's a uh, trailer sales and supply place in McHenry, Illinois. They have a huge selection of stuff and always seem to have the parts that I need. So, here bright and early, waiting for them to open up to pick up my new brakes. Now that we're back from the trailer parts place, we got everything cleaned up real nice. Spindles, everything look good. And I also noticed that this thing has a torsion independent suspension so instead of leaf springs it's got these torsion bars which is a real nice feature don't have to worry about those springs breaking or the connectors breaking while you're on the road also ran all the hardware through the parts washer make sure we got all the old grease out of there and uh, everything's nice clean and fresh to start with these are the new uh, electric brake shoes it's uh, about they were about 65 bucks a piece so not too bad you got to make sure that uh, you get the left and the rights because they are not the same you make sure that uh, not only do you get the right ones but you install them on the correct sides one other tip I have for everybody is that uh, this is something I use whenever I'm working on my vehicles it's a copper based anti-seize I don't like the aluminum stuff and I put this stuff on everything I work on. It may not be a big deal to put everything back together, but if you ever have to take it apart again, this is a lifesaver and a bolt saver. A little trick one of my electronics guys showed me was to use the shrink wrap that's like one size bigger than the smallest one that'll fit on your wire. And then just stick the ends of the wires together before you solder it instead of twisting it and everything. That way you can get that uh, shrink tubing over there easily and it's a nice flat connection. You don't have to spin them together and then try to double them over and squeeze that shrink tubing over them. I like to use my little butane torch and also the uh, thinnest wire, the thinnest solder that you can get works a lot easier because it has a lot less uh, heat needed to melt it. And our first connection is soldered and shrink wrapped. I used a little clamp to hold that um, nylon cover back so it didn't want to keep going over the wires where I was trying to solder. But let's get this thing back together here. Get that anti-seize on there and get this first one done. Okay, we got the anti-seize on the bolts. And just go around and tighten these up a little bit. Kind of difficult with one hand. And 
that should do it. I want to double check that with a torque wrench. Or maybe I'll just use the uh, good old trusty German method, the uh, Guten Tight wrench. Well, side one has the brakes on. Looks much better now that they actually have some pads on those shoes. Hopefully uh, the rest goes as smoothly as this did. All right, now to grease up these uh, bearings, we're gonna use the uh, Lucas Red and Tacky Grease. It's uh, got anti-seize built into it, and it's also rated to 540 degrees, which should be plenty of uh, temperature for the uh, high-stress application in a trailer wheel bearing. So let's get these things greased up and get those drums back on and adjusted. Once the hubs are back on and everything feels right, Gonna grease these bearings, and the way to do that is to hook up your hook up your grease pump and uh, rotate that uh, drum as you're squeezing. The Zerk fitting has some holes going through it that uh, bring it to the back bearing, and then fill the the drum through the front and. After you uh, pump it for a while, you'll see that uh, the grease starts coming out in this opening here. And once you start seeing some clean grease coming out of there, you know you're full. You can see that old grease coming out of there. Got the old green grease in there and got the new red grease going in. So we're just going to keep doing this a little while until we get all that old crap out of there and get the fresh stuff coming out and then we know we got our bearings clean and full of clean good grease well, I have to apologize I didn't get that final shot of the clean red grease coming out of that hub I, I was up to my elbows in grease and I thought I hit the record button but apparently I did not so uh, just so you know I was going through about one tube of grease per wheel that's what it took to get all that uh, dirty grease to purge through there. I did preload the inside of the uh, the uh, hubs with uh, the grease. There was a large pocket in there where it holds the grease. And uh, I didn't want to sit there and pump that all out. So what I did was I just scooped some out with my finger, preloaded it up there. But uh, that green grease was still purging through because that was what was in the rear bearing. That rear bearing is very difficult to get out, and I didn't want to ruin the seal on the back of that um, uh, on the back of that drum and hub. So I left that thing in there and figured I would just purge that out when I uh, push the grease through. So again, count on using one tube of grease per wheel on a trailer this size. Before we wrap it up here today, I just wanted to show you guys a couple other modifications I made to this thing that I thought you might be interested in. First thing I did was I installed a outlet on the outside of the trailer here. It's a twist lock outlet, like you would see on a camper. That way I could hook up an extension cord and bring in shore power. And then I also rigged up another cord, which is for hooking up to a generator. If I'm out somewhere and there's no electrical power available, I could just plug that thing into my generator and uh, bring power to the inside of the uh, trailer here. I also used hard conduit to wire outlets into this thing. I used to use this as my portable workshop. I used to bring this home. I had a couple of benches set up in here with a table saw and uh, be able to hook up my shop vac and uh, use this vacuum system here so that I didn't fill the thing up with sawdust. Got a whole variety of cords and tie downs rubber straps. I also added these D-rings into the floor so that I could uh, use the ramps to get my ATV up into here and have something solid to tie it down to. Also put some D-rings through the aluminum frame and use some carriage bolts on the outside so that I could uh, secure things in here. This little deck I put into here came in real handy when it uh, comes time to moving the kids to school or picking them up from school. That way you don't have to worry about trying to stack everything to the ceiling. You can put uh, two layers of things into here and have it separated. It does make it a little difficult to get in and out of the side door there, but uh, the deck is easily removable if you needed the full cubic 
footage in here and uh, you just pull that thing out, remove a couple screws and uh, you got the whole thing open again. So, variety of screws and stuff. Uh, I got some halogen lights in here. I think I got to replace those with some fluorescence or LEDs at some point. And the little uh, deck up here doesn't hurt if you were to become stranded out on the road somewhere. You could always sleep on the top there as well. A little space heater wouldn't hurt. So, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And we'll be back soon with some more fun do-it-yourself projects. Have a good one, everyone.